Mm, BRS yeah. TV investigates live. Brand new thing. Oh man. Mm -hmm. So we might bounce back and forth between investigates and some other content, but investigates means that you get our real first-hand experiences, our own commentary, off the cuff from some of the investigates data that we have. All right, so it is flow today. You thought it was just a powerhead, but it's so much more. We're gonna show you all kinds of different things here. Uh, this is the first step in finding the best available powerhead yep. for you. It's figuring out what they do. Yeah, and so I mean, uh, I know I, when I was making my pump decisions, I was looking at brands and what I want more. So this goes beyond that brand loyalty. It's kind of the things we did with the lights, you know. You get all the data and then you get to make the best decision for yourself. So you're getting beyond like the features and the bells and the whistles, the gallons per hour really don't mean as much as, they, as you think. Uh, and so you get actual performance data. You're gonna be surprised. All right. <laughs> So, uh, what we're focusing on today is the angle. And mm -hmm. so we got about 12 different pumps today, and you're gonna be able to see that this is one of the ones that we're looking at, which is this just tiny little like width of, uh, <laughs> of water. And there's another one that is just super massive. duper wide and massive. And I guess the moral of the story that I would share right up front is in an LPS tank where I want mm. gentle, consistent flow hitting as much of the tank as possible but not pounding stuff. There's my guy. Yeah. Uh, and where would you want this one? Well, this one you see, it's like, is this like a 2,000 gallon per hour fire hose that's just shooting this stream across? And in, in which case, you know, your SPS uh, dominant tanks, those are the ones you, when you see your know, pumps on either end and you're creating this turbulence that's smashing together to create that chaotic uh, turbulent flow. That's my guy right there. So why turbulence, why that much more flow? Because you got way higher lighting, you mm. gotta get rid of all those free uh, or oxygen radicals that are gonna poison everything. Uh, and so this is uh, really your SPS lighting, your LPS softy lighting, you're gonna see it. All right, so you'll see all 12 of them. Uh, and uh, right here is, uh, you're also gonna see about, not this just the angle, the disbursement. But where you know, the disbursement, yeah. where they're going to hit throughout the tank. So you're going to see that as well. So this is your standard 120-gallon uh, four-foot tank. So, you know, you're looking at uh, 48 inches long, like 24 inches tall. We're going to just make a line like this where you where it about hits the top and bottom, which is, you know, fully dispersed. Yeah. All right. Another one we're going to see is, does it hit the full four feet of the tank? Before, you know, does, yeah. does it make it all the way here yeah. before it just kind of like stalls out and can't make it all the way? <laughs> There's some that hits invisible walls. Yep. It's crazy. Yeah, and it just kind of starts like turning in on itself. So you're going to see that as well? A lot of surprises from mm -hmm. pumps that we would have thought it would perform differently. Completely, completely different than what we what we saw. There the are some test. in here where I'm like, what? And, and like, you're gonna find that just because you thought you knew what the size and the shape of this thing looks like, that you're going to think, oh, <laughs> would have done that, but it doesn't. Nope. All right. So uh, here is uh, just for those of you that want to know right off the bat. Yep. Uh, the gyre is the smallest angle pump that we have. And right? it makes sense. We talk about that sheet of laminar flow all the time, and it actually it actually uh, works out in the angle of the uh, pump flow. Uh, and the widest angle pump is the Tune 6095. So there's your sheet. We also got, uh, if you're watching this uh, after it's live, you'll be able to go into the description or even in the timeline and you can just pick at any one of these pumps and you can be able to see all the data just for that specific pump. Jump around, mm -hmm. do whatever you want. Uh, but uh, how do we pick these 12 pumps here? Uh, well, these are what we're in stock. Yeah, uh, there's that. Post yeah. Black Friday. <laughs> That's uh, true. And so, uh, there are, we picked out some popular ones. There's mm -hmm. obviously a lot more pumps than this. We'll keep mm -hmm. getting into it. Uh, next time it's gonna be velo velocity though. Yeah, so, uh, we're, this is only part one of our flow testing. So we wanna see what the angles and what these things do. Then we're gonna get into some really geeky data. All right, so starting with the narrowest angle of all of them, we're gonna go from narrowest to widest. Uh, and you know, when, it, when I think about flow, mm -hmm. I always think of that thing that J Josh at WWC told us, mm -hmm. which is it's not about gallons per hour, it's not about anything, it's about getting flow where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually just uploaded a little video to uh, my Facebook, which shows how we did the 360. We use these gyres you know, in a vertical fashion to shoot sheets of water along the glass. The 60s are, are centered in a little further, come back. 
and then there's dead spots in the back where we use those wide angle mm. 6095s. Yeah. And you can tell it's working because there was that cyano problem in the in the uh, 360, and uh, now that you've directed flow in the right places, it's just not there. <laughs> when I say cyano, man, there was a lot. So <laughs> I was cranking up the lights, intentionally trying to cause problems. Yeah. Uh, just you know, cr cranking them up 10%, let the problem go away, crank it up, go mm -hmm. away, and. Uh, and we found a sweet spot where cyano just grew without uh, without the flow. I'll show that video on Facebook as well. Well, the information that you're going to see today with the with the wide versus narrow, you can really start to piece together like your problem situations. If I have a dead spot in my part of my tank, I don't want this jet stream like like you had to point those tunes straight down towards the sand. Well, I don't want a uh, massive fire hose jet stream down there. I want something wide and uh, you know a little wider, a little soft that will get the flow there, but not blast my sand around. Okay, just before we get into this, we're gonna get into a real in just a second, is I tried so many pumps at mm -hmm. home, yep. and uh, I just have them available to here. I'm swapping them out, it's a total huge expense. Mm -hmm. And I now understand why some of them didn't work the way that I thought they would, is because the angle a lot of them is totally different yep. than I anticipated. Uh, the CJ one being number one, so you'll see uh, how how that comes out. Extreme, in a yeah. All right, so all right. Match mix spot gyre here. All right, so this is a little protractor we dialed up, and you're gonna see that this has. It's a, actually 5280, 5,280 gallons per hour. 5,280 gallons an hour. Oh, this is XX 350, mm -hmm. uh, and it's 21 degrees uh, that you're seeing here. So. If you watch it, uh, maybe we could, oh, can we restart this thing here? Let's yeah, try and then go there back. We go. Here we go. All right, so you can see that it's just filling up this thin little band here, and it's just shooting a really, really thin, and we know that. We've seen it in the gyre, a sheet of water. All the way across. You know, coming yep. across. So that, that is line that it's about to hit here, you know, is about where that billowing cloud starts to reach the, the disperse towards the top there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, for sure, that 21 degree narrow angle lasts about halfway of the tank before it really starts to widen out. And then uh, what you'll see here in just a little bit too is how it gyres back onto itself. You can see the gyre now coming uh, back from underneath. It's coming back on itself over the top. Yeah, so water needs to replace itself. So if it's gonna shoot across the top up here, uh, then it needs to replace itself and come back down here. And this is obviously in slow-mo. Mm -hmm. uh, and so. When you're seeing this thing go around and around uh, like this, tiny little jet of water in a sheet, nobody's surprised. Now we put it in the middle of the tank, but uh, obviously most people would put it on the top mm -hmm. and then it would create uh, that gyre like that. Yep. I will tell you, I like turn it on the side and I turned it uh, uh, so that the sheer edge of it is going right along, right the, along glass, the glass. Shoots yeah. right along the glass and creates, cut, creates a gyre. Uh, I don't know, real cool. So in this case, this is a situational pump for me. I want to yes. shoot water across the top. I want to shoot water across the sides. I want to shoot water in a sheet in a very directional flow. And uh, this does that. So you can see it again, one last time. Nope, go back. Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this for me is, the solution that we found on the 160 for especially those high growing SPS corals, uh, I can see how this one is working because it gets it gets you know three feet before it actually starts to widen out to a point where you would have to be concerned about blasting one of those sticks and getting the you know destroying the skin off of it, which which is why this works at a 21 degree angle. I can mount it so high, get it above the corals. By the time the velocity gets there, it's not enough to rip tissue off. Absolutely, right over, mm -hmm. and you don't see it super hard in any other direction. So one of the things I'll share right away with you is that. There are pumps that you're going to see that are this wide. Yeah. Uh, and so, the, like this little band, totally different. Yep. All right. So the next one is the XXF 330. Uh, it's little brother. It's yeah. little brother. Not surprising. Also the narrowest one that we did. <laughs> so uh, 21 degrees in this case as well. So now you can see where the this is their directional. That top angle, that top line angle, is a straight line off of the pump. So uh, this one was turned just a little bit down, but uh, you know, angled down towards the tank. But again, a 21 degrees here, not much off of its little brother. So doing the same thing. So I want to point some out here. Uh, when you see this, uh, actually, you know, this it, it kind of goes outside these lines a little bit. But if you really pay attention to mm -hmm. it, 
all the actual flow is right inside of that small little band. Yep. Uh, and so it kind of kind of spills out a little bit, the dye, but really the high power pressure flow is inside that band. So when we're looking at these, pay attention to, you know, the velocity, not necessarily the little bit of spill that goes outside the lines. Yeah. So we did our best. A lot of this, I should say, too, is just kind of... Uh, just, just squirt some dye in there and look at it? And well, yeah, in our interpretation. case, yeah, it's up to your interpretation, mm -hmm. but the important part is we share the data with you so you can make your own interpretations as well. Mm. Uh, all right, so the gyre, though, stopped right here, and I don't know if we can really get it to show again, but it stops right around here and uh, the 330. It will kind of hit the end, but what you're going to see is it kind of like swirls up. So it's not really like wide angle hits it. I think it actually hits down here. But you can see it's kind of swirling up, and this is an important part. When it doesn't have the velocity, mm -hmm. it kind of stalls out, and then the water has to come back somewhere, so it just kind of goes back. And, yeah, you're going to see it Ends hit, up kind like, of right hitting up the wall, here. yeah. The flow isn't doing that, though. It's the gyre that's mm -hmm. doing that. And it really never hits the other side of the tank uh, very well anyway. You can see it just kind of slowly misting over there. Yeah. So the velocity is not strong enough in this case to get all the way to the other side with a 2100 gallon pump. So for me, this makes sense uh, in the two different sizes of the gyres in that, you know, now I know the, that the angle on both of these is narrow. So I already picked the, the first gyre for my very specific, like the, you know, the six foot 160 tank, where I know it can get three or four feet before it really starts to disperse. But here with a lower velocity pump, and when we do some velocity tests, you'll see some difference there, it'll get maybe half of that, like two, two and a half feet before it really starts to disperse. Mm -hmm. And then I can make a smarter decision on, all right, well, if I have a four foot tank or a six foot tank, here's the pumps I need. And it's not just based on gallons per hour. In this case, it is kind of a gallons per hour and, and velocity thing, but I know how, how far the, uh, that uh, spread is gonna end up going. All right, next one here. This is a CJ uh, Extreme, and I, I don't know, man, in my videos I had shared that I thought this was a super wide angle pump. And this is just by looking at the design, man. Mm -hmm. It's super open. There's not really anything funneling it in. And I got to tell you, uh, this number, is the third narrowest pump It's the pump third we found. narrowest. Yeah, 2250 gallons per hour. And here we go. Yeah, 22.5 uh, degrees. And the, most of the flow staying right inside uh, of these two lines. And, you know, eventually it will hit, I think, up here, uh, right about here. But it you crosses see, that. It, yes. This is gonna like spill upward. It really isn't hitting it with a real direct velocity of going uh, mm -hmm. all the way to uh, you know a, a specific point. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll notice that like this is you can pay attention here like that. Even if these pumps here are off like just by a little mm. bit and they're aimed, you can see this one is clearly aimed just, just slightly a couple up. Of degrees yeah. up, and it matters, man. So yeah. when you bump those things and they are going all over the place. This is going to change what you're doing by it's, a considerable degree. I think the only pump that would that wouldn't be a concern is one like the MP40, where it's just it's straight every single time, and it's uh, there is no direction on it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that one will probably be straight almost every time. Yep. I think there's some ways that the water's coming off the propeller as well mm -hmm. uh, that actually shoots it not as straight as you think, and that's MP40 might be a one mm. that you'll see that with. Uh, but yeah, in this case, like you also notice how long that we've been talking and it's taken it's, to get to the other side. Now you can see the other glass. It's because the flow is actually much slower with mm -hmm. this pump. It, it did make it to the other side, but it's just kind of like slowly drifted over yeah. there. Uh, you're going to see with some higher flow pumps where it just like pounds its way to the well, other side. Well, and you can also see that most of the dye at the end of the thing here is up in the uh, you know upper three quarters of the tank. So that's just kind of you know it hasn't had enough velocity to hit and come back on top and on bottom like we saw with the gyres. It's just enough to kind of get out there and then dissipate into a cloud and slowly rise. Yeah, you're going to see some that turn this whole thing green. Uh, so like the velocity, the angle on this one, uh, it's a super duper. The sales pitch on this guy is this little teeny pump. Little you know, teeny pump, like, but it- You want to hide it? Yeah, and, but it pushes a jet stream for a short distance. Sure, a jet stream, short distance. Yeah. All right, MP40. This is the fourth narrowest pump. And I'm not surprised, like, this is like the SPS mm. lover's dream, oh. right? Like, this mm. is your pump for that. Uh, and it's also starting to, in, you know, in the middle of the pack at 12, we're starting to inch into there. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, you want turbulence, you want water 
it's going to cross the whole way. Uh, here it is. So this is 24 degrees. Yeah, degree and uh, a half. And you're going to see it, uh, eventually it will hit up here. You're going to see this trajectory, you know, hit it up here. But you're also seeing it's pumping it's, up water so fast. That, yeah. It's, it's going to hit the other side. You'll, see, you'll start to see the reflection off the other glass any second here. And this is probably why uh, it's one of the most popular for this, you know, especially like a four foot tank, MP40s. That's what I had on, mm -hmm. on mine, side by side, pushing into each other. And then when you put them on those random modes, you can imagine that this point of turbulence, if one was on the right and one was on the left, and how that would shift throughout the tank because they're just blasting at each other. Yeah, you can see it really travel, transversing the entire thing. Uh, and you're now seeing it come back again. You're seeing it come back across the bottom here. Yeah, no, you're no. also seeing it come back across the top. So when you think gyre, man, like gyre is just pushing water one direction and it has to re return somewhere. The gyre is a unique in the fact that it's like a sheet of water, but these things do the same thing. Mm -hmm. They will create circular flow in, in one way or another. Uh, and so in this case, you can see how full uh, of uh, how much this has mixed up the entire water. It's not just this little cloud up mm -hmm. here, and you're gonna see it just fill up the whole tank. Well, that's one thing we wanted to get at with this test. Uh, we didn't, uh, we were filming so slow-mo that we didn't catch the, all, the entire thing, but we wanted to kind of see like how quickly, or how, in, in five or 10 seconds of real time, how much of that dye was completely mixed throughout the four foot tank because it's completely different. Like the CJ Extreme you just saw, it was still a cloud by the end of that, that clip, but here we're still on the, almost to the end of this clip and the entire tank's almost green. But there aren't many, uh, heads up, there are not many that will actually get it back all the way in a reasonable time frame. Mm, yeah. So uh, this is one, of, and it's 4,500 gallons, so not surprised that it like mixes it all up uh, yeah. significantly faster. <laughs> All right, so uh, stepping it up, one more. Uh, it is the Aqua Illuminations Nero 5 at number 5 of 12. At number 5 of 12. Middle of the pack again. Dude, look, at the, look at the puck style on this. We all know that the Nero 5 is a very skinny, low profile in the tank. And it is pretty wide, too. So you think that the shape of the, the distance between the back end, where it's re bringing water in, and the uh, front end, like an, like an inch, maybe, maybe an inch and a quarter. And you would think that with that short distance and not a not long, narrow cone, that this thing would just, it, water would hit it and go pff, extremely wide. God, well, that was not the case. <laughs> I thought for sure it was going to be the, one of the widest pump flow pumps out there, and it's not. Yeah. Uh, but this is one of the things I think that you can look for is see how the prop is pre set back inside mm. of a cone that has walls on it. I can't always tell you that it's open. If it's open, it, it can be really anything. Right. But if it's set back inside of a cylinder, it will almost certainly shoot water forward. Mm, yeah, right? yep, yep. Uh, You're gonna see that. And so the, you'll start to be able to recognize like just by looking at, looking the, pump, at the pump, what it should do. Mm -hmm. Not always accurate, but most of the time. Yeah. All right, so in this case, we got 25 degrees. One and I'm gonna tell you, we'll go more. all the way up to like a 75 degrees. So there's this pocket of fairly narrow and it, it blows out of there pretty quick. All right, so in this case, uh, you're seeing it here, but this one has such high velocity at 3,000 gallons, you're gonna see that it, this one doesn't actually hit the ceiling or the bottom. It's all the, that, you see that yellow Oops. line? Oh, oh. No, there we go. You see that yellow? Oh, this is another cool part before we get there. If you can watch that thing swirl out of there, that green turbulence. But uh, amazing, for 3,000 gallons per hour, that MP40 was, that yellow line, that end point was a little further back. It was more widely dispersed at the end of the four foot tank than this Nero, uh, than this Nero 5. This Nero 5 just had a slightly wider angle. I mean, look at it just like pounding through the, uh, through the water. And That's the first amazing. one that just like reaches the other side without getting all the top. Not even close to the top or bottom. This was the surprise for this me. This is the effect of narrow because like one of the things you need to think about is 200, 200 gallons an hour, or 2,000 gallons an hour, in this case three. Yeah. Uh, I can put it into a fire hose and shoot it across the tank, yeah. right? which is what we're doing here. Uh, but I can also do 3,000 gallons an hour in 75 degrees. Sprinkler head? Yeah, yeah. sprinkler head, way low velocity. It will mm. make it over there kind of, but you're going to start to see it drift upward and down. And why that MP40 was, you know, drifted, it made it all the way on the other side, mixed all the water up really well, but it also did kind of drift uh, later, out to the yeah, side. Earlier than this Nero 5. Yeah, and so you're now seeing it return back onto the other side as well. 
Dark right. Horse, Dark Horse, the Nero 5. Tune streams, this is an important one to pay attention to because uh, we did two tune streams. One of them, which has this cone Looking on the front. Looking at the cone here. Right? And yeah. you're gonna see a narrow. And then there's one that's like the 6095, which is like literally labeled wide It says wide, wide, yeah, right on the box. Okay, and it's the widest angle one we'll see today. Yeah. Uh, and the difference really, man, is the output of these two pumps. Mm. So uh, we'll look at the 6095, which should be narrower because of the cone. Uh, and it is. It's a uh, 29 degrees. Yes. Yeah. A big jump from the Nero five Oops. was Nero five was 25 degrees, and uh, now here we jumped to almost 30 degrees, 29 and a half degrees. We're starting to get into the wider, wider group. And about halfway through the tank, you're going to see it's wide enough that it hits uh, the top. Uh, and again, because it's wider, it kind of hits a barrier and starts to spread mm -hmm. out. So the barrier is like right here and you're seeing it spread out towards the top because it just doesn't have that you know, fire hose punch to get to the other side. Yeah. Uh, and you'll see it, the ones that have the punch just go straight, straight across. Straight across. Yeah. All right, so yeah, you're gonna see it. This, this pump, and this is like the grandfather of flow, right? Like <laughs> this, this pump is what we all like, grew up on. And I, th I think, was it this one or was it 6095s that you had on the, uh, I think it was the DC version of this one that you had on, the, uh, that we first started with the BRS-160. Oh, we had a whole bunch of them. Yeah, uh, yeah like four, yeah. four or six of them, yeah. Yeah, the DC of this thing. So in this case, yeah, you can start to see it still. Like it's filled up this area here. It's just taking a really long time to disperse throughout the tank. So the question that we're missing here is- Half the flow. Where would I, when, in what situation would I use, you know, this middle of the road type 29, 30 degree pump? So one of the things we're missing here is the features of the different pumps, right? Mm -hmm. So the feature of the tunes is obviously the little globe that it comes in, and yep. you can aim it wherever, the, wherever right. it wants, right? right? right. Uh, so in this case, I got a, a middle of the pack, a 30 degree, uh, well, 29 and a half degree pump, uh, and I would still say it's on the narrower end it of is. that that spectrum, yep. but. It's starting to go that, I can aim it, it's 2,000 gallons, doesn't really make it all the way that cross to four gallons as, or, or uh, uh, four feet as, far, as fast as I would like, but eventually drifts over there. This kind of feels sort of mixed tanky to me, where mm -hmm. you know I'm not really shooting a whole bunch of turbulent water, I could probably supplement some of my SPS dominated type pumps here, uh, but I'm also, you know, it might be a little too narrow for like, if we were looking at the 900 that is full of Ghanis and softies and things like that, this might be a little too narrow, a little too powerful punch, you know, for that tank. So maybe middle of the road, middle of the tank type thing. Middle of the road. Yeah. All right. So Octopulse. Uh, and, you know, this one is interesting because you'll see the design. It's, it's, mm, a, it's a little puck type, you know, uh, pump. And it looks kind of like the Nero. Uh, except for you can see the outside of it Just is actually a different. It doesn't have that little cone mm. uh, around it. And so... Because of that, you probably won't have the velocity, uh, but you might have a wider angle. In fact, we know you do. This is a 4,500-gallon 4, pump. Yeah, it's up there with some of the, the top, I think the top three are in you know, 5,000 to 4,000. Yeah, so this should like uh, compete with uh, the uh, Vortec yep. you know, in terms of flow. Mm -hmm. All right. So in this case, it is uh, 29 and a half uh, degrees as so well. Tied for six in degrees. Now, right in the, uh, let me say middle of the pack, but it starts to widen out pretty good. Yeah. Uh, all right, so here it is. And you can see that it is coming out of the sides a, a little bit, but if you really pay attention to the flow, it's inside of these lines, especially as you look towards mm -hmm. the end. Uh, the difference between the 4,500 gallon per hour here and the MP40, you remember where the yellow line for the MP40 was way on the other mm -hmm. side of the tank, this thing disperses really quickly. So it's gonna move a lot of water, but it's not gonna create a lot of turbulence. Mm -hmm. uh, like the turbulence point of having two of these is just not gonna be like when two jets that are hitting across the side right, right. Are, are going to hit. I mean, that's like when you see like the reef crest mode of the, of the like uh, vortex, right. you, know, that, that, you see that turbulence moving back and forth all over through mm -hmm. the tank. So, but wide flow here, uh, totally different. And so, uh, we'll just play See, it again real quick. Well, and that's why, as, you know, shopping on gallons per hour alone, or picking pumps gallons per hour alone, I wouldn't even know the difference between, you know, this says 4,500, the MP40 says 4,500. They gotta be in the same class. Here they are, you know, separated by, you know, I think uh, almost 10 degrees, just under 10 degrees of, of angle. Yeah, I think that you're, in the future, like we're gonna have to create uh, this type of uh, like 
product demo. You yeah. know, uh, you'll see this. You'll see a couple other tests we're going to do probably inside those things because at 20, 2,100 gallons, like, doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah, really? Right? Like, 2,100 gallons is, like, yeah, it's super wide, super narrow, uh, really yeah. We used to tell you just look at the, the shape of the uh, pump, and you can make a, a, a more educated guess. You can make a more educated guess, but again, and it's not showing up. Some of these are oddballs. Yeah, so towards the end, it's still been going for quite a while here now, and you're not really seeing it fill up the whole tank. So, like... It's that velocity that really gets the water moving. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like an adductor in some ways. Like when you shoot water across, it moves the water on both sides of it as, it, as well. So you're like actually getting more flow in, in many ways as the water's pushing by it, it, it swirls around. Coming back on itself, yeah. All right, so uh, in this case, we now have the Neptune wave. 4,000. Uh, 4,000 gallons an hour. Uh, now this is number seven in terms of uh, uh, narrowest to widest. Number eight. Number eight. But look at the you know design of this. Uh, again, looking at the octopulse and how wide open it was. This you know the prop is moved forward in the, from the body. It's got all this open space here. Uh, if I were to just look at this off the shelf and guess wide or narrow. Yeah, I'd probably be about here. Is this that 4,000 gallons per hour? I've just been so drilled into my head on, you know, choosing pumps by gallon per hour rating. I see the 4,000, I'm like, I know how other 4,000 gallon per hour pumps, those are jet streams. Okay, this makes sense actually, because one of the ways that they design this thing is actually to be mounted on the back of the tank. Mm. So it kind of hides the, you don't have the uh, magnets yeah. on the side of your tank. And it has that little swivel function. So it's not like a puck where it just kind of aims one direction here mm -hmm. and that's it. It has a swivel function and you can put it on the back and then aim it in. But we, in that case, I wouldn't want a laser shooting across the tank. No. I want a big cone of water. This makes sense, know? yeah. Right. So in that spirit, uh, it is a 36 degree. I mean, remember we started all the way down near 20, so we're already like, I'll double that, right? 36. Much, much wider. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this case, because you have that velocity though, it actually keeps that same shape almost all the way to the end. Now, yeah. water eventually has to return down the bot uh, bottom, but you can see it, it does kind of hit here, but it, it's hitting here at the same time as it hits up there. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, in this case, man, we've really pushed, and you can see how fast this is happening, even in slow-mo, so much faster than the other ones while we're talking forever. Oh, yeah, forever. that's true. And, and it's already coming back. So this is an interesting one, because I haven't actually used the, the wave on mm -hmm. a, any of my tanks. Uh, I don't know if you have. No, I haven't, but I, make, I can see, you know, with the variability of the uh, velocity of the gallon per hour, I can see where I can use this tool just by how wide it is. Uh, but how, with the velocity that it has, it's a four foot tank again. So I could see these being some of the primary pumps on the edges of the tank on either side, but I can also see if I turn down that, that gallon per hour, that velocity, I'm getting, I'm still getting that wide angle. But like you said, I can put it on the back wall. And if it's only traveling two feet rather than four feet, I can reach a wide angle by the time I hit the front of my glass. This one is one of the ones you can see that monster wall, a cloud has traveled and mixed the whole tank up more than any of them. Uh, one of the things I'll note is none of these pumps do one thing specifically well. Yeah. It is this area right here. Uh, yeah. So right underneath the pump is dead spots. I've seen it in my tanks. Uh, even when they hit turbulence, it's the, sl the deadest spot in, in all these tanks is going to be right here <coughs> underneath these pumps. <coughs> and so, you know, when you really think about it, your flow, Think about how to avoid the dead spots because that's where the slow growth and mortalities are going yeah. to be. So, yeah, I mean, you can see at the end of this, this thing is completely you know, green. green. All right. So, in this case, now we have the JBJ Ocean Stream. Yeah, this thing, okay, so I would say, just looking at the design and almost kind of following that tunes, you know, 6085, I'd say if I were to pull this off the shelf, my, uh, shelf, my guess would be this is a laser beam, or it's going to be a very narrow flow. It's got the cone on there, you know, it's got that same big body shape. This actually, the front, the top part of this pump slopes more than the underside of the pump, so it kind of angles like that. It's a weird shape, but, but you can see in here, right inside, that prop is right up next to the front of that cone shape. All right, so how does it do? Uh, 45 degrees, a big, big jump Mind blown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is getting much, much wider now, uh, and you can see it filling out. But what you're going to see here is with 1,600 gallons, 
mm -hmm. it is going to stall out. And you can see even now, like even like, as we're talking, it's just going so much slower than the I, other I think pumps. some of the pumps we've seen already, uh, we're at the wall at this moment in time, but here we just crossed the halfway point of the tank. And this is where that like DC conversation comes in too, is like, well, maybe I want this kind of slower flow, but mm -hmm. I also want turbulent flow at points, and that's why they ramp up and down over time. Uh, but uh, I mean, you can see it, it, it had hit the bottom of the tank, you know, right in the middle of the tank. I, don't, I think that's probably the closest yet that anybody has hit the bottom of the tank. Yep. But you can also see right now, Right, there's like it's forming like a C shape here, uh, and the water in front of it has stalled out entirely, and is just slowly drifting at this point. Yeah. Uh, and even here, man, you're like really not seeing a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. it, it's just that's what happens when you widen out the flow. Is it when you have you know essentially two feet of flow versus six inches yeah. uh, and you're in a lower gallon per hour 1600 that is what you're going to see but you know armed with what we do what here i can actually use this pump smartly i can i, I understand how this pump will uh should be used for me mm -hmm. this is my you know you know 36 inch uh you know 36 inch long tank uh lps you know real softy type tank this thing isn't gonna push a whole lot of water very far, but it's gonna come out wide and it's gonna be soft with that 1600 gallons per hour. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an AC pump, so it only, you know, uh, it only goes one speed, but uh, like, just like, uh, kind of like the tunes, this thing I can maneuver almost 360 degrees. You can see it's actually still moving here and we still haven't filled in this area. So it's not gonna go four feet and it's just slowly drifting over there yeah. eventually. All right, uh, the IM Wavelength, another pump I hadn't actually used before, another one that looks like a Tunes, has the cone on it. You would have thought that it was a wide, or narrower angle, but is not. It is very wide, it, coming in at number 10 wide, 53 degrees on this guy. 53, uh, much, and you can really see it coming out that it just fills that whole area up and so much wider. I mean, remember the gyre? Uh, it was like like this. Narrow. You know? Yeah. And like, and it's really important because like if you're talking about this, it's like oh, wider is better, narrower is better. That's nonsense. It's what do you need to get flow to the area of your tank that you're looking for? Mm -hmm. Do I need water over it on the sides? So in my case, I use 60s, I use gyres, and I use the wide angle tunes to achieve what I'm looking for. Three different brands, three different styles, three different flow ratings. Uh, this one is That's interesting. That's a brand loyalty piece. Just yeah. throw in the trash. Yeah. Uh, use the things that work. This this one's interesting, interesting because it's almost a thousand gallons per almost a thousand gallons per hour more than the JBJ that we just saw. But that line where it starts to disperse and hit the top and bottom of the tank is almost the same. It's also not hitting all the way. Even and a thousand gallon or like seven hundred gallons more an hour, it's still at that wide angle. It's just really difficult to get over to the other side of the It's tank. like an invisible wall over there that it just hits and stops. Great for some things. Sometimes uh, some other things not. If you want to hit wall, if you're asking a pump, does it go four feet? The answer is kinda not really. No, I right? would I wouldn't say that. Now, but here's the deal. I got two pumps. Maybe I only really need it to hit in the middle. You're not going to get real high velocity or, not, or, or uh, turbulence, though, because it, you don't have two strong pumps yeah. hitting each other. You yeah. just kind of have this slow wave or like cloud kind of merging a little bit, right? Yeah. All right. So next one here is the current efflux wave. Have you used this one either? I have not, not until I did this test. It was, these uh, in a lot of them. So like the the JBJ, the la the IM that we just saw, this current efflux. Uh, so, you know, they all kind of follow some similar form of uh, you know uh, form and function in mm -hmm. the, their maneuverability and even kind of size sticking out into the tank, but completely different in degrees and how they uh, how they run. That current JBJ Ocean Stream, I think that was the. Uh, 1600 was the uh, highest gallon per hour one that we that we carry, mm -hmm. but I, I would love this that we get a chance to see use tools we haven't used before, and now you can see how they work more intelligently. 
Uh, in this case, look how wide it is, 55 degrees. Second to the uh, last. Yeah, and so 2100, and like, again, it's not current, it's not AI, it's not Ecotech, it's not whatever, it's the right tool for the right job. And the one thing you see in here, uh, again, if you're paying attention to gallon per hour, the last uh, the last one was 2300, the ocean stream was you know, uh, 1600, here we have a 2100 gallon per hour pump, but it doesn't disperse as uh, as quickly as those other two. It's a wider angle, but it actually, uh, in this one, you, it really hits a wall. You can uh, see that cloud, like a high the, density uh, just, dye yeah. that just didn't dissipate. It, it got out there and then it just stopped. And here it is now already traveling back on itself, uh, but definitely doesn't hit the other side of the wall. Yeah, I, I mean, this one's interesting. And like. So one of the questions that you're going to have now is, uh, all right, well, is it really 2,100 gallons? Is it, mm. uh, uh, you know, like it, the velocity of it? And what we did is uh, we bought uh, like a six-foot tank, maybe seven-foot tank. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, glass cages hooked us up. Yeah, and so we bought this big giant tank, and we got a velocity meter, and we're now going to actually measure. Now we know the angle of these things. We're going to measure actual water per feet, uh, feet gallons per, second, per hour yeah. per second, uh, and we're going to do it at six, twelve, uh, eighteen, all the way over. Yeah. So we'll find out like how much how, water is it actually moving? How quickly do these things dissipate? You know where they are four feet in the tank. Here at zero. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not anything. But what is it here? And like how? I think one of the things you'll see probably with like the the Nero is. It'll be really strong here, mm -hmm. it'll be really strong here, and it'll progressively get lower, off. but it'll still be flowing here. Either with these wide angles, it'll be really strong right here, and then a massive 4x drop off right here, and then a massive 8x drop off right here, and, and then, then almost, almost zero. nothing, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you're going to be able to see how you would use this. Yeah. All right, the widest angle. Uh, Says it on the box. Yep, so in this case, the tune stream, 60, 95, 2,500 gallons an hour. You're gonna be really interested in see how this is. I actually got two of these I'm on excited. my tank right now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, here you go. Uh, when Dave, when uh, it was either Blaine or Dave. Look at this. They were shooting with me. They were like, holy cow, that's wide. 72 degrees one third into the tank and we've already, already hit, hit the, top. the top and the bottom of the tank. Uh, and, and it, you know, 2,500 gallons an hour. Yeah, well, they, you know, in the, uh, a note to make here too is all of these pumps were on their very max constant flow setting, no pulses, no bells and whistles, as fast as they'll go. Uh, this one was a massive, you massive surprise. You can just see it's, you know, pushing out this whole wall of dye. And an important note is like 2,500 gallons is just a little bit higher than some of the other ones that are similar to this. And you can see that wall is just Look penetrated the, way farther than the other ones. That C shape is really interesting. Once it hits the bottom and hits the top, it kind of forces it on and then back into itself. Well, the, the bottom and the top of the tank like redirect it, you know, and so it's super duper wide and it's all, you know, kind of flowing forward, but when it hits the bottom of the top and it can't continue, so it, the flow kind of gets focused uh, forward mm. and you see that as it kind of wraps around. But it's important to note here in this case that this pump is actually making it all the way to the other edge of the tank. And, and also, it's not 4,000 gallons, but yet it has mixed up most of the tank pretty well. You know, so. Really interesting stuff here. All right, so in the spirit, like you know, as we're talking here, I mean, you can see this pump like, has made it and filled up the entire tank with super wide angle flow. Uh, it almost hit the glass or barely hit the glass on the other side, but nothing wider and really gentle flow. This one was kind of deceiving to me too, if you go back one, uh, where again, this, you know, that cone shape, that tune stream cone shape, to me, I would out of the box guess, this is gonna be a, you know, a jet stream. Well, if you take this cap off, actually, you can see this really, really wide mouth mm -hmm. and it's super narrow and the uh, prop is pushed almost oh. all the way up to the front, Yeah. right? Whereas with uh, many of the other tunes pumps, the prop's set back mm -hmm. inside. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into the shape of the propeller, the placement of the propeller. Uh, and so that's why when you look at these things, you can kind of guess what they're gonna do. But if you lined up uh, a bunch of these pumps and you said, 
well, you know, is the, the tune's going to look like this in super duper wide angle? Uh, and I wonder if this thing will just start right over. No, it won't. But at the gyre, 15. At the CJ Extreme with no cover on it, at, at 22. Uh, and so, oh, we had a, a typo, it looks like here. So the first gyre, actually, I'm going to go all the way back. Yep. Uh, the first gyre is actually only 15. And there we go. So it said 21, ah, but it's yeah, actually 15. 15. So just 15. If you go back and see, just this tiny little ribbon of water <laughs> here at 15 degrees. And like meanwhile, by now, the uh, uh, tunes it would have already you know, hit the top. Yeah. So total different thing. So let's talk. I, mean, like, I wish I could see the comments here. Uh, we took away the, <laughs> the ability to see comments in, in this case. But I, I would love to know, you know what people think. Uh, so I'm going to go back and read the comments. So you guys share. Like, which ones of these pumps man, speak to you? And you're like, ah, oh, man, I, I get it now. I mean, there was, there was um, the Nero, one of the biggest surprises for me. The Tune 6095, one of the biggest surprises for me. But... Uh, I think you know the solution that we had on the 160 SPS dominant. You know the gyres mixed with the vortex in the front, and then mixed with some smaller vortex in the back. Uh, that it, if my aquascape didn't allow me to get water back behind there, like uh, we were able to put the MP40 in the back behind the aquascape, if I needed something, if you know maybe my aquascape was set to a little closer to the back wall, and instead of just blasting you know three quarters rock in this little tiny channel back here, I'd actually then choose something like maybe I turn a gyre sideways in the back to get through my rock. Maybe I find one of these like. Uh, really, uh, like the CJ Extreme would be a decent one to put in the back wall for a really tight space that I know is going to shoot water pretty far to back through the back there. I mean, there's still other elements of this. Like for me, mm. I just don't want to see chords and you know stuff in the tank. Right? So then you yeah features. So and I got the MP40s, uh, especially if you can put them in the back of the tank shooting across. But you know, with the gyres, man, like that ability to shoot that super narrow stream of water. I mean, I can get it really in the areas exactly where I want. I can go over, around. Mm. I mean, there's no other pump. If I put like a lot of these other pumps, you know, on the side of the tank that you know, they're, uh, 15 degrees means it's really, really going to shoot all the way, especially if I, I'm going against the glass. But if I put any kind of round cone type pump, it's just going to shoot out and it's not going to make it the full six feet of my tank. Well, I, I'd be upset, you know, if, I'd be upset if I ended up getting a pump and I was like, okay, I'm trying to uh, tackle that dead spot there. And I bought this, I got this, you know, uh, 4,000 gallon hour pump, I think it's going to hit that spot. And when you put it there, it's so wide that it actually doesn't solve your problem. Uh, so, you know, having this kind of information is like, oh, yeah, man, that's what I need to solve my problem. So you got those spots in your tank, those kind of dead spots where the corals aren't really growing very much, or you have corals that are kind of ripping tissue off. Like you can actually make a smarter pump decision rather than like, well, now I have to turn my pump down, you know, 40% and I'm not using 60% of my pump just because I got, you know, the wrong one. You know what this feels like to me? Hmm. It's like the first episode of the Refugium series that we did like a million years ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? It's like, well, I kind of thought, you know, the Refugium would kind of work. I just didn't know that it was going to actually work too well. Like, <laughs> as long as you, you know, light the hell out of it, uh, it would it yeah. work so too well almost. So now I feel like we're on the verge here of we've been talking 2,100 gallons. You've been talking, you know, brands. You've been talking all kinds of different things. I feel like we're on the cusp of changing the conversation, man. Like, I'm getting the types of flow. So in the peninsula tank, again, I got ah, two sheets of water. Yeah. I'm not, the cord goes up and down right along the seam, right behind the gyre. I can push the gyre up within an inch of the top. Mm -hmm. I can barely see the pumps. And if you want to know what it looks like, uh, Ryan, uh, uh, BRS TV, you can just find me on Facebook and you'll go see it or Instagram. I think it's there too. Yep. So you can see this. And then there's two uh, MP60s in the back where you can't even see anything except for the pump motor, like just sitting on the back of the tank. And then right where I need it, Two of the tunes is right up near the top, kind of paint, point down in the back of the tank. So when you look at the primary view angles of the tank, you just don't really see cords pumps, and pumps. Yeah. Yet I got three different, totally a wide angle, a sheet, and beams of light or water <laughs> shooting in the tank doing what I needed to do. 
So some of the next phases of these testing, this is only, like we said, this is only part one. We just kind of want to see what the angles are, make some inf uh, inferences, you know, see well what the widest versus the narrowest is. Uh, but like you said, we got a velocity coming up next. In a uh, six foot or seven foot tank, we have, uh, you'll see beads uh, floating around this meter. You'll see what your kind of pump is doing. And then you, we're going we're to expand that into an aquascape and see how these pumps react in an aquascape. Might even check out some of the different varying modes and, and how those, you can see them in beads and things like that. So this is actually a really interesting point mm -hmm. because uh, if uh, we had this one, man, super narrow, I'm shooting across a tank on the top of the tank with a gyre, this is almost certainly going to make it all the way across, even if there's an aquascape here. Mm. Even if there's aquascape and corals, it's still going to do probably what you designed it to do. Uh, and that will probably be true for uh, the, uh, the stream, though, in this case, at 2,200 gallons an hour, but it's pretty slow velocity. I can see this one actually hitting an aquascape and stalling out. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the Vortec, everybody's putting these on the front, kind of in the sides of the tank. In front in of the their front. aquascape, yeah. It's going to shoot all the way across and, and with like the uh, uh, reef crest modes and stuff, create various points of turbulence as it shifts back and forth in front of the tank. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you're not going to see the, the same exact thing. And then you know, same thing with probably the aqua illuminations. You're going to probably, this one actually has a little bit of tilt to it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, you can turn that up, down, left, right, whatever. So that's kind of a nice piece of the puck. But you're gonna shoot it across, you're gonna create the turbulence, but what happens, man, if there is a aquascape in here? What happens, like, how do, we, what if the aquascape's in the way? You know, so mm -hmm. we're gonna do this with an aquascape, you're gonna be able to see it. And my suspicion is with you know things like this, where you got really wide angle. Uh, let's let's bounce to one. Like so, this JBJ Ocean Stream, super wide angle. This might be good if your aquascape goes all the way to the edge and really kind of goes out farther than you think, or the corals going, yeah. and you just can't blast stuff, and there's no room to move the power heads forward. Mm -hmm. But also. 100% aquascape's gonna stop this flow. Oh yeah. You're not gonna make it. Or, you know another one, one of my favorites, I wanna do a video on this, cause the, the WWC hybrid tank has really come into its own. Oh I yeah. I don't know why we ever shot this. <laughs> we do. Uh, but I was thinking about today, this is one of my favorite implementations of flow. Mm. Because what we have is two MP60s on the side of the six four tank, then we have two MP40s that are on the bottom mm -hmm. and one uh, one that's on the bottom, and then we have them on the back. Mm -hmm. So flow's going shooting all the way across behind the rock. We're flushing stuff out. It's going across the bottom of the bare bottom, and then you got these turbulence points missing, MP60s, mixing around. MP60s, yeah, massive flow, it's kicking a, things up. You don't see any dead spots. You don't see the aquascape getting in the way because there's so many areas uh, where it's coming in and out, going across the bottom, going across the back, going across the front. So, yeah, I, I think you're gonna see the aquascape really affect this. So that'll be like probably test three. Yeah, uh, well this is, uh, it, this all builds upon itself. So you learn about the flow, what you're gonna do with it, how it you know, works in an aquascape and what to expect. Then I can build my aquascape, make a smarter aquascape, make smarter pump decisions. And I, I got this thing licked without buying like 20 different types of pumps because I'm not getting the right one and whatnot. So I'm really curious, like you guys should share with us, how much would any of this data change what you buy? Is it important to you? Would you like to see this type of thing? The velocity meter, we're actually testing uh, water per second, uh, feet per second, or the actual flow patterns, what it looks like in an aquascape. Before you buy something, or is it totally irrelevant and you just buy whatever brand uh, you know your buddy told you? I mean, when I go shopping for like computers or camping gear or stuff like that, as I I, the, I get you know other people's firsthand experience with it and, and reviews, and you get some of that here too. But you know, when I like for the tent that I bought, I really went and researched like what material made this thing better, why they were better, what they put it through, you know, the the tests that they put it through, how that compared to other ones. I like those uh, those like CNET type compare and contrast reviews where they put them in through the same uh, you know the same uh, testing, and then they rate them on how they work. You know what's surprising in lighting? We did a survey a while back yeah. uh, that said uh, had all the different things about lighting, like what would drive you know what uh -huh. light you would pick yourself, and the number one on the top was is it easy to mount? 
Yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter performance. Doesn't matter if it kills thought? corals, grows corals, makes them look awesome. Doesn't it? Can I clip it on my tank, or do I have to hang it from the ceiling and plumb bob and all this other stuff? Yeah. Well, and so that's the interesting part is like so that that gyre piece, the gyre thing. And I, if you're just talking about health of the animals and perfect flow, shooting the water across the top of the tank over the aquascape, and then hitting the back and having it come back down and flush out probably would have been the best. Mm. But if you ask me if I could visually stand two of those gyres on the top in the angle that I usually sit at the tank and look at it, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. I just didn't like yeah. the way it looked. And so it really didn't matter. So it's the combination of performance. It's a combination of some of the features and stuff. like Your desires. You yeah. know what? I said this actually uh, to the AI team the other day. Yeah find a way to make the AI pumps use a battery backup because end of story, I won't use a pump without a battery backup. Yeah, I, yeah. Done. we've said that in mistakes, we've said it in, in a lot of pump episodes. I mean, you could get those little ones for your computer, <coughs> you showed they last about six Tested hours, that, yeah. no matter how big you got it. Yep. Uh, and that wasn't really good enough for me. Uh, you, the tunes have, you gotta go buy your own battery and it's kind of wonky, the whole thing. It's a little cheaper because you can get a big battery if you own, want, yeah. I mm -hmm. guess. Uh, the, the, like the Vortex though lasted like 80 hours. So All the DC pumps should have a DC battery backup. You know, when you meld all of this together, man, it'll be really interesting to see how you know, performance and all these things influence. You know what will also be interesting to see is with the Vortex specifically, uh, you're starting to see a lot of those uh, oh, aftermarket, aftermarket things. things. Mm. Uh, I think there's like the, the what's one called, uh, like an anemone saver, and there's yeah, there's an anemone guard which is isn't wasn't really made for flow. I think more I than just an air, anemone. Oh yeah. Think. Uh, and then Neat Aquatics has the limpets and the uh, he's got uh, the urchin that you can you know swap out the actual head for something that and and changes the actual flow pattern. It's got a longer cone on there. It's got a shorter cone on there. And actually, we should revisit this with uh, some of those mod modifications. That is right in my mind. I, I'm a heavy Vortec user. So, if any of you guys want to see what all of those aftermarket uh, things do for the Vortex. Uh, you gotta tell Randy. I'll do a quick test uh, yeah. and throw it up there on a short, a YouTube short, or on fa uh, Ryan's Facebook or something. By quick means it takes all week because you have to drain the whole, <laughs> every single one of these dyes. You have to clean the tank back up and yeah. start over. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, so that's step one of flow. Part one. Right. Uh, we actually have a flow master series. We'll leave you with uh, right here, so you can go check out and learn why flow actually matters. Uh, but now you have an idea of how your pumps work. Want to hear which ones you like the best? But go check out Master Flow right here.